Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna answer a few more questions sent in by you in the comment section of my videos. We didn't do a video like this in a while, so I think it's due. So I've print screened a few questions here on my phone. Let's get to answers. Sonia is saying that the roots on her orchid are long and they're hanging out and if she needs to cover these roots in any way. Uh, no, you absolutely don't need to do anything, especially Phalaenopsis, but most epiphytic orchids will create what we call aerial roots. In reality, all of the roots of an epiphytic orchid are aerial in the sense that in nature they don't grow in soils or in pots, obviously. They grow in the air, attached to trees or branches, but for the sake of easy conversation in cultivation we refer to aerial roots as these ones which don't want to grow inside the pot. They are normal and as I was saying Phalaenopsis are most prone to grow them. You don't need to do anything really. They are adjusted to living in the air without high moisture. If you want to maintain them growing you can spray them from time to time. I actually never water my aerial roots but I do have quite high humidity and they just grow unbothered. When you water the orchid if you want to spray a little bit the aerial roots that's perfect that's great. Aerial roots are very helpful in the event of the potted roots just dying off and sometimes it happens especially when we're beginners to kill off these roots. The potted roots have more chances to get suffocated than the aerial roots so don't cut the aerial roots but you know don't go out of your way to treat the aerial roots in a certain way. If you can miss them sure that's great but don't worry Phalaenopsis will pretty much always have roots just hanging out all over the place. Anders is asking me if I use the oil spray solution, which by the way I will link you to down below in the description, on Phalaenopsis orchids just as a preventative against red spider mite. And the answer is yes, I actually do. Phalaenopsis orchids are just so sensitive to spider mite infestations, the red spider mite I mean. They're prone to getting it, the spider mites love the leaves of these orchids, they're so hard to remove and out of everything, Phalaenopsis are their favorites. And I think this happens in nature as well because fowls are among the few orchids which actually contact a virus from spider mites and this is the orchid flag virus. I have a video on that as well, check it out down below if you're interested. The orchid flag virus is not such a bad virus, but appearance-wise it is dreadful. It creates chlorosis spots on the leaves and I have a few fowls which are still struggling to get rid of the virus. Any new leaf still has a few more spots, but it takes so many years for uh, the virus to completely subside. So fowls being so sensitive to the spider mite, yes, I do make preventative sprays, especially on fowls. I might not care about catleas. Catleas don't attract spider mites, but fowls do. So how I do it though is I prepare a 1% solution, not 2%. 2% is more of a bad infestation type of treatment. I make sure that my hand sprayer is very very fine and I put in quite a few drops of dish detergent and that does the trick but yes I do make preventative sprays on fowls. When temperatures are high enough for me to spray, they're getting a spray. Q and CQ is asking if they can cut some of the aerial roots off or if this will damage the plant. Well, I would have to say it will damage the plant. As I was saying earlier, aerial roots are just very common with Phalaenopsis. It's something we need to get adjusted to. Cutting them leaves an open wound, which is pretty big, that can invite in all sorts of pathogens, uh, fungal spores and things of the sort. So my motto is do not create open wounds on orchids unless you seriously need Need to unless you have an infection that spreads and you need to cut the leaf or something just to eliminate the infection but just cutting stuff because it doesn't look good no I would not do that of course you can do it but be warned you might not be happy with the result and as for the roots I'm pretty scared about fusarium it is a fungal disease, spores could be everywhere and they enter the plant through an open wound, let's say through the root system, usually that's how it happens. Cutting the roots? Oh no no, I would definitely not recommend something like that. And as I was saying earlier, aerial roots can be a plan B. If something somehow happens to the roots inside the pot, you'll have the aerial roots to hydrate the orchid and saving it will be a lot easier. Tinkerbella says that she's worried about her orchids, leaves and flowers fall off what to do. Well there are many possibilities why uh, leaves or flowers can fall off. Flowers falling off that might be okay. Orchids don't stay in bloom forever particularly if they have been in bloom for a long time and you just don't know it, you just purchased it, but leaves falling might be normal, might not. 
So normal will be, uh, let's say in the case of a phalaenopsis, all the leaves at the bottom, at the base, falling off, one or two, that's normal. Sometimes it happens. More leaves falling off, three or four, that's not normal. And because it's hard to determine what causes them, I'll link you down below to a video that I made, 10 ways of destroying orchids and the ways to fix them, where I actually talk about the most common ailments orchids can have and how to fix them. Hopefully, one of the instances down there can be applied to you. Just see what looks more like your orchid. North Star is asking why the leaves on their phalaenopsis, the ones that are just growing, are thinner than the older leaves and my best guess is stress. With Phalaenopsis orchids, whenever we put them through stress, whether a pretty brutal repotting or orchids that are just bouncing back from something like root rot, they will usually produce smaller, thinner structures than they're supposed to produce. And I have here one of the examples. This orchid arrived to me with very oily top leaves for whatever reason. It grew uh, another crown right here, but you can see the difference between the new leaf and the older leaf. This one is broader and I think a little larger this one is thinner it only has to do with the stress so if you just repotted your orchid and you suffered some root loss or the orchid is recovering from some sort of ailment it's pretty normal and in time they will grow bigger and bigger however if your orchid was not necessarily recently repotted or you don't know if it went through a sort of disease and is continuously growing smaller and smaller leaves then something's wrong in your care or in the environment she is absolutely stressed check the root system that's the first thing you need to do if you don't see leaves falling and stuff of the sorts I don't think you should worry about stem rot or crown rot or rotting issues but do check it also make sure you are feeding the orchid you're using fertilizer and make sure you are watering in time and so on just make sure your care and the conditions light conditions temperature and all of those things are appropriate for the orchid smaller thinner leaves means stress Choose One is asking if they can reuse hydrogen peroxide after using it with an orchid and the answer is no. Hydrogen peroxide reacts to organic material. Once it reacts, it loses one oxygen atom and it becomes water. So if you reuse it, it's not going to be as efficient as it was in the first place. Not to mention you might actually carry some stuff, some disease over to other orchids. Hydrogen peroxide is a disinfectant, yes, but there are things which need something stronger and particularly because we're using hydrogen peroxide 3% and not more powerful than that, you can actually transfer disease. So no, I would not suggest you reuse hydrogen peroxide. DV is asking if it's necessary to place sphagnum moss on top of semi-hydro pots to increase humidity and root production and the answer is no absolutely not. I would actually not do it because you will put some organics inside the pot and if you want to maintain the pot organic free and decomposition free I would not use sphagnum moss and things of the sorts that will undergo decomposition processes. Roots will grow just fine as long as you maintain the top quite moist and the way to do so is just to pretty much water in time. As a general idea, you can actually customize and edit whatever setup in whatever way you like best. If you want to experiment, of course you can experiment, but know a little bit about the outcome or what the outcome might be. If you plan on using semi-hydro in, let's say, the standard way and the proper way and with all the benefits and drawbacks of the proper or original way, then adding sphagnum moss is a no-no. If however you want to make a hybrid or you think you will do better, obviously do it. Uh, just know that organics will sip in the pot and that will reflect in the amount of time you can maintain an orchid in one particular pot or setup and how you will need to repot it afterwards if you have sphagnum moss trapped inside the leka. As I was saying, personally, I want my pots to be organics free, organics which are prone to decomposing that is, and I don't use sphagnum moss, but I do make sure to water in time. Lenalis is asking about some whitish tiny insects that seem to jump around in the medium if they are mites and if hydrogen peroxide will take care of them. Um, no, they're not mites, not the bad type that eat uh, leaves. And no, hydrogen peroxide will not necessarily solve the problem. I don't really know what they are. At first I thought they were springtails. I don't have them anymore since I have semi-hydro, but in organic media they appear. I think they just feed upon decaying matter. I don't think they hurt anything. I never noticed them to hurt anything. They do jump around when you water and they can get excessive. And if you have a little phobia, that might not be pretty, but overall, I don't think they're harmful. They're just there. If they're beneficial or not, I cannot tell you, but um, 
yeah, don't worry about it and don't try to kill them off with hydrogen peroxide, they will come back guaranteed. So these were the latest questions that I got in the comment section of my videos. Thank you guys so much for sending in the questions. I hope this was useful and if you have other questions, just leave them down below in a comment and in my next video, Q&A video that is, I will try to answer your questions. So you know the drill, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye!